This is exercise 5-1, part A. In this section, we're criticizing each melody in terms of the rules for simple melodies discussed in the textbook. Uh, to criticize a melody, that means that we're going to look at each of these melodies and any mistakes that we find, any things that don't follow those five rules about simple melodies from the textbook, we'll make a little comment saying what is wrong and where it's wrong. Uh, so, starting with rhythm in your textbook, simple melodies should have a simple rhythm with most durations being equal to or longer than the duration of the beat, and the final note should occur on a strong beat. That's not a problem with any of these in the homework. Uh, we're all in 4-4 four, four time. Everything, every note is a beat in length, a quarter note or longer, a half note, and each of the melodies ends on a strong beat, either beat one, or beat three. So there's no problems in rhythm. The next thing we have to look out for is harmony. Every melody note should belong to the chord that is to harmonize it. So if we look at our homework here, you'll see that under each note there is a Roman numeral and they've also told us what key this melody is in. So this first melody is in the key of F major and the first melody note is over one chord the second melody note is also over one chord. The dash just means that the previous chord is still going on. So what we want to do here to check our harmony, it's a good idea to write out your F major scale, and then you can write out all of the notes that uh, form each of the chords in the key of F major, all of our diatonic triads. So we can see that our one chord is an F major chord, has the notes F, A, and C. So anytime we have a one chord, the melody note should be either an F, an A, or a C, or if it's not, that's an error because the melody note does not match one of the notes in the chord going on at that point. So there's no error here because an A is in an F major chord, no error here because an F is in an F major chord. Here the chord changes, so if we go to our little cheat sheet that we made for ourselves. We can see a five chord is a C chord, has a note C, E, and G. So we'd look at that melody note and go, okay, is this a C, E, or G? It is, so that's not an error. So we'd do that for all the rest of the notes, making sure that each note is in the chord that is harmonizing it. If it's not, then that's an error, and we'll write a little comment saying that that's an error. So that's harmony. Next is contour. The melody should be primarily conjunct or stepwise. That means it should mostly be moving in seconds, either minor seconds or major seconds. The shape of the melody should be interesting but clear and simple. And this is a big one. It should have a single focal point. It should have one highest note. If we look at the example in the textbook, there's an example of two focal points here. So both of these are the highest note. You need a single highest note like you have here or like you have here. So looking at each of these melodies, you wanna make sure that each melody has a single highest note in it. If there are two of the highest note or more, then that's an error, so you'll make a note about that. That's contour. Next is leaps. There are certain leaps that you want to avoid. You want to avoid any augmented intervals. Uh, most commonly, if you're in a minor key, watch out for augmented seconds. Those happen uh, accidentally a lot. And in both major and minor keys, watch out for the interval of an augmented fourth. That's a pretty common error. You also want to avoid any kind of leaps of a seventh. Minor seventh, major seventh, diminished seventh, any kind of seventh. Don't have a leap of a seventh. You also want to avoid any leaps that are bigger than a perfect octave. You can have a leap of a perfect octave, but no larger than that. Other rules about leaps. You want to make sure that if your leap is bigger than a perfect fourth, then it's approached and left in the direction opposite to the leap. Uh, so, for example, I'll give this one to you. There is actually an error here about uh, the leaps in the first melody. If you see this leap here, this D to this B flat, that's a leap of a sixth, so it's bigger than a perfect fourth, and it should be approached in opposite directions from both sides. It's leaving in an opposite direction because it leaps up and then moves down. But before the leap, it's approached up by a step. 
So that is something, that is a mistake that we will write about. That's one of our criticisms of this melody that we can give. And then the last uh, rule about leaps is that when smaller leaps are used consecutively in the same direction, they should outline a triad. So if you have two leaps in a row, make sure that it outlines some kind of triad. And it doesn't have to match the harmony that's going on at that point, it just has to outline a triad. And then the very last rule is tendency tones. For right now, the only tendency tone that we have to worry about is the leading tone, scale degree seven. So in the key of F major, the seventh note is an E. So anywhere where there's an E in the melody, in this case, in the key of F major, we want to make sure that that leading tone either moves up to one, to tonic, so it resolves up by step, or it's part of this scale-wise descending line that goes tonic, down to leading tone, down to submediant, down to dominant. So that's all you have to worry about with tendency tones. Don't worry about this whole uh, subdominant pitch moving down to the mediant pitch. That's not really a big deal. The big deal is the leading tone. Either it has to resolve to tonic, so it has to step up, or it has to be part of this descending line from tonic down to dominant. One more thing about this section, if you're still not sure exactly what the section is asking you to do, in your textbook, there's a self-test, self-test 5-1 on page 61. And the first part of this self-test is exactly the same. It's asking you the same stuff, just with different melodies. It's asking you to criticize each of these melodies. And the nice thing about these self-tests is that the answers are in the back. So those answers, if you look in the back of the textbook, back here on page 576, uh, those will show you exactly what they mean when they say criticize each melody in terms of the rules for simple melodies.